It's Knicks next Saturday night at the Barclays Center. The Knicks just beat the best team in the East, and the Nets just lost to the worst team in the East. So we're going to try something different today. We're going to bring in two guys from well-known New York basketball fan pages to rep their team debate style. So repping hashtag Nets world is Robin Lundberg of the Talking Nets podcast, and repping the Knicks is Knicks fan TV host Alex Chateris. I said that right, right? Yes, you did, all right, sir. I got, all right, I got it right. All right, so, fellas, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to throw a topic out. I'm going to give one of you the floor to state your case, and then we're going to pass it over to the next guy to kind of debate that, and then we're going to close the topic out with a final point. This is what we call the tip-off. Robin, you guys are at home. You've, you've won the last couple matchups. Nets, you represent the Nets first. So I'm going to start with you. Uh, Brooklyn, or why is Brooklyn going to beat the Knicks on Saturday night? Well, the, the Nets are going to win because they can't lose. And, and I think Knicks fans know this. Because if the Nets were to lose, well, they don't have KD. You know? <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> if the Nets win the game, then it's, oh, they beat you without KD. You know, the, the Nets have won eight games in a row in this series. The, the Knicks are, are kind of due. But after a long road trip, oftentimes that first home game tends to be a letdown. The Nets had a road trip. They came back home. Obviously, a poor performance against Detroit. Second night of a back-to-back. -back. I'd imagine they'll be hyped up for this game. And even with Kevin Durant out of the lineup, you just saw him. Kyrie Irving has been sensational as of late. He should be the best player on the floor. And Nick Claxton has emerged as a, a real, you know, kind of all-star level player. So it's not like the, the Nets don't have some pieces either. Alex, no, oh, no KD. But the Knicks have been balling the last two games. How do you guys get it done? Look, man, the Knicks, they've been balling the last two games. As you said, look, we don't have Mitchell Robinson, our top rim protector, but these guys are coming together and they're battling very well. Look, they just defeated a fully healthy Ca Cleveland Cavaliers team. They just went into TD Garden and snatched, ripped out the hearts mm -hmm. from the Boston Celtics. Jalen, Brun Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, RJ Barrett, these guys are playing some high quality ball right now. And look, I wouldn't be surprised if they go into the Bar Barclays Center, claim New York as they rightfully should, because look, it is we're in the we're in New York City, baby. There's only one team that represents <laughs> New York City well, and that's the New York Knicks. Uh, Robin, final point, 15 seconds, go. Team in, in New York that reps the city, it's <laughs> Nets World, baby. You know, look look at the, the hashtag that KD used, and when you talk about you know the the amount of attention that is spent on a team. When you look at, you know, merchandise sales, when you look at the gate at the arena, when you look at all-star votes for Claxton, more all-star votes than, than Julius Randle and, and Jalen Brunson, I don't want to diss the Knicks. They're having a good season. I, I don't understand why Knicks fans are impatient with Tom Thibodeau. It doesn't make any sense to me. It feels like he sort of maximized the roster there. Jalen Brunson having a good year. Julius Randle ha having a good year. They found something in Quentin Grimes. But the, the idea that nobody cares about the Nets, I, I don't think could be further from the truth anymore. And the, the way to prove that you care about the Nets is to constantly say nobody cares about the Nets. All right, Alex, I'm going to let you start off with the next topic, and you get the final point on this one. He named a lot of stars. It's all about star power here in New York. The Knicks do have the better stars on their squad. Why? Look. We're talking about two guys who, who are deserving right now to be All-Stars in Julius Randle, Jalen Brunson. Randle right now has been on a heater. The last five games, he's averaging 28 points. You got Brunson averaging 23 points. You saw how clutch they were in Boston last night. These guys are, have just been the catalyst for what New York has been doing right now. And with these guys, when they're playing at their peak powers, yeah, it could get a little ISO heavy in the fourth quarter, but these guys are crafty. You got Jalen Brunson's footwork. You see how he's able to get in, uh, within 15 uh, feet from the rim and, and, and closer. And you see how he's just able to create separation with all these guys. Randall, he's been shooting the three ball really well. We actually have to consider him if he's actually a stretch four at this point, because when you look at his shot diet, even though most of it is within like the two point scoring area, he's shooting about 40% from three right now. Not as a percentage, but most of his shot attempts are coming 40% from three. So you look at these guys right now, the way they're, the way this team has just evolved from when Randall got here about what three four years ago it's just they're they're playing at a high level right now you see how good they are that's why the Knicks are going to do it man Robin the Nets don't have KD can the Nets match the Knicks star power 
Yeah, I think the star power is kind of even. I mean, when KD is there, um, then it's, uh, you know, clearly in the Nets' favor. You're talking all-star level versus Hall of Fame level. Kevin Durant's going to the Hall of Fame. Kyrie Irving is going to the Hall of Fame. But right now it's Kyrie Irving, Nick Claxton against Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson. Kyrie Irving's the best player amongst that group. You see Clay Thompson right there. He just gave the Splash Brothers the business again, you know, outplaying Steph Curry in that matchup. There's a lot of... Um, other things that come along with Kyrie. He's a bit of an enigma. That's why he doesn't have a contract extension. Hasn't always been the most reliable dude. You never know what might be behind door number two. But when it comes to pure ability, can't nobody front on what Kyrie Irving is capable of doing. So he should be the best player on the floor. Nick Claxton has really emerged as of late. And when you're you're drafting up, if you were doing like a um, you know, an expansion draft between these two teams, I think you could make the case that you would take Claxton over the the two guys from the Knicks who have both had good seasons when you're projecting forward at just 23 years old. Final point, Alex, 15 seconds, go. Look, you look over the last couple of games since Katie's been out, the Nets are two and six, okay? And now they lost to like the Detroit Pistons. Okay, they lost to the Suns without Devin Booker, who the Knicks beat. We, we've been demolishing the Pistons in the last couple of games. Look. We also just beat the Celtics, who the, the Nets just lost to. Knicks, Knicks, you know, don't overlook who the Knicks have right now. And I'd even include R.J. Barrett, who had a slow start to the beginning of the season, but he's also averaging over 20 points the last five games. With those three guys and the way they're able to be clutch down the stretch of games, look, you look at R.J. Barrett last night, big three-pointer, corner three to, to take the lead, and then hits two freezing cold three free throws against the Celtics to seal the game. That type, that type of intensity, being able to be that clutch, don't sweep on the Knicks. That's why they got this this weekend. All right, we're going to close this off with a little predictions. Alex, who wins? What's the score? Go. Mm. I'm going to go with the New York Knicks, of course, man. I mean, I think, it's, I, think, I, think this, I think this game is going to be close just because, look, no shade to Kyrie Irving. He's doing a lot of great things right now for Brooklyn, okay, without Kevin Durant. But it'll be a close game. I think it's going to be a high-scoring affair, and I think it's going to come down to New York's defense in the end. I'm going to give a prediction of, if you're asking for a score, I think it's going to be 114-110 Knicks. There's a lot of people calling their bookies right now. Robin, close us out. Prediction, well go. Like I said at the top, the Knicks better win this game. But for the sake of the segment, I'm going to predict the, the, the Nets 121-117. All right. I'm loving it. The Knicks take on the Nets tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. on ABC. Gentlemen, both of your pages are creating some really great content representing New York basketball as a whole. Thank both of you for coming on today.